Hello, I'm Jan Bedell, the Little Giant Steps Brain Coach. Welcome back for another Brain Coach Tip. Now let's kindergarten skills for successful academics. When I did podcast number 48 on preschool skills, I talked about being a neurodevelopmentalist and looking as the whole child. We look at the tactile, the auditory, the visual, the manual, the language, and the mobility. By tactile, I mean the deep sense of pain. You know, how do you feel pain at a deep level? Then the light touch is also involved in the tactile. The trigeminal nerve is one of the largest nerves in the body. It controls the eyes, the nose, the lips, the mouth, all of this area. Actually, four out of five of the senses come through that strategic trigeminal nerve. We also look at proprioception in the tactile area. That's where you are in space. And you can imagine that this is going to be very important if you're writing. You have to know where your hand is in relationship to the paper and the lines to be able to write. Also affects you moving through space as well. Your auditory system, if it has some hypersensitivity, sounds bother them, they're distracted by noises, or there's some tonal processing. That means the ear is hearing. You could even get a hearing test and they would tell you, yes, their hearing's fine. But there's something missing from the ear up to the brain because it's not being interpreted correctly. Also in this auditory area is auditory sequential processing, holding those pieces together of auditory information. This is really important for success in life and in school. And then the auditory, we also look at the dominance. Which ear is the child taking in the information for storage? We hear with both ears, but we put information in storage through one, and it's stored in the opposite hemisphere of our brain. This can be very strategic when you're trying to get information out. Visually, we look at the acuity. How do they see up close, far away? Their tracking and convergence. And also, we look at dominance in this area, too, because, again, the eyes both see and they take in information, but the brain chooses one to store that information. This can make a huge difference for those that are having inconsistent recall or dyslexic kind of symptoms. The manual function, that means your hand. Using cortical opposition, that index finger and thumb directly across from each other, pad to pad. Or like bilateral movement when you're opening a jar or opening a bottle of water or something like that. One hand's moving one direction and the other hand's moving the other direction. We also look at hand strength which is definitely involved in pencil graph. We look at language, speaking in words, then phrases, and then sentences, and on into conversational language. We also look at the articulation of an individual. How well do they pronounce each of their sounds? Now, there is a mini program that you can get. You just call the office at littlegiantsteps.com. The number is 972-758-1260 and ask about the language mini program. If your child is not speaking clearly, we can put up a series of activities that can help you with mouth stimulation, trigeminal stimulation, all of those things that are foundational to being able to move your tongue and make those sounds like they should. We also look at mobility. Now, I've spoken about this often before, so if you've heard many podcasts from me, you will have recognized this. This goes to the lowest level or the lowest form of movement that starts to build the foundation for walking and skipping. and It also builds the foundation of you thinking in an organized manner and moving and walking and, and doing everything in an organized manner. In the preschool episode that I did, I gave you a breakdown of each one of these areas and some things to do in that specific area. So I encourage you to listen to that episode if you haven't yet. Those would be foundational things to do, and then you can add the ones that we're going to talk about today 
to build a really good foundation of skills necessary to make those academics successful, really for the rest of their life. Let's go back to the tactile system. We talked about in that other episode doing deep pressure, pressing on each part of the hand, each finger, all the way up from the fingertips to the shoulders and the toes to the hips. Now this is especially important for working to get those pathways built for handwriting. So if you will make sure you're getting on each part of the finger, the joint and in between the joints, with little, really hard pressing to the point of not really pain, but acknowledgement of the child that you're actually pressing on them. This will help build those pathways and it will make writing so much easier. Also, if they have issues with being too rough with their siblings or something like that, this can make a huge difference because they'll be experiencing pain appropriately and then they won't be too rough. Now on the auditory, the sequential processing is one of the most important skills I think that anyone can have and that is holding sequential pieces of information together. Now you can probably understand why this would be so important for comprehension, following directions, and the ability to stay on task. This is an easy one to work on. You just get the free test kit at the store at littlegiantsteps.com and make sure your child is able to do the number of digits for their age up to seven. Anything above seven is superior function and that would be great to go into college with something higher than seven, but you want to make sure that they have at least a five or six to handle phonics well. Then they'll just be breezing through phonics and the comprehension will come much easier too because they won't have to struggle so much with the phonetic aspect. It'll just become automatic. And then they'll be able to understand and hold pieces of information that they've read together because that's sequential processing as well. You might also look at the podcast number 23, but you knew it yesterday. What happened on the test? That is where I describe about dominance. And I've mentioned dominance earlier, but that one will actually tell you how to test for dominance and some things that you can do about that. In the visual area, obviously you want the eyes working well in every aspect of their function. Acuity is one of them, and you want to get their eyes checked. You know, can they see up close? Can they see far away? That's acuity, so that's the first place to start. One eye doctor that I work with said that it would be a really good idea to add just a little plus lens, like a 0.5 plus lens, to take some of the stress off of the eyes for young children because they're naturally a little farsighted. And if you just put those plus lenses on for a kindergarten child, just when they're doing close-up work, then it really takes that stress off. You want to make sure that those eyes are tracking together and individually as well. So you can use finger puppet or something they'll be able to track back and forth and try that about 18 inches out from the bridge of their nose. So you're going to be about arm's length from them when you're doing the tracking and try it about 12 inches. That's about the distance that you want them to be from their work. Now, if they're up way too close, then that could indicate there is a problem. And convergence is those eyes working together, so the eyes are putting the message from one eye right directly on top of the other. I think you can see that if this was skewed and showing shadows of letters, that this would make it much more difficult to read. So the eyes need to see well, they need to track well, and they need to converge or work together, coming up close and far away. The other thing that needs to happen in the visual realm is visual sequential processing. This is holding visual information together quickly. And you can imagine how this is so important for reading because you've got to hold lots of letters of words together 
because once you've sounded them out, they start to be automatic, just visually understood by the brain, and you don't really sound them out later. They just become sight words. The other thing you look at here with the visual is the dominance, of course, and this makes a huge difference for retrieval of information, especially if the child is under pressure, which is usually what happens in a testing situation. You want to get the free test kit for the visual sequential processing on the Little Giant Steps site as well and work your child up to at least seven. So a five-year-old should be able to do five, auditory and visual. A six-year-old, six. A seven-year-old or anyone older than seven should be able to hold seven pieces of sequential information together and bring it back out. Another thing that could help in the visual realm, especially for this age, the kindergarten age, is something called detailed reading comprehension. With this program that you can find at littlegiantsteps.com, you will have about 20 or 22 words that you teach the child to read. Now, after they can read those 20 words, there are 300 sentences that they can read, and then they mark a card. So it would be something like, put a blue minus over the little bus. And then they look at a card that has six different pictures with two sizes of each thing. And they have to remember all five of those pieces. So it's helping that auditory processing in a very instrumental way to help with comprehension. Now, the detailed reading comprehension program contains three sets of these 20 to 25 words where there's 300 sentences with each one. This is a really amazing product because it comes with a CD with all of those sentences on them. And so you can use them for multiple children or multiple times if your child is struggling in this area. Moving on to the manual function or the handedness, of course you don't want to influence the hand. We talked about that last time. You can do extra deep pressure on the fingers and this will help with their handwriting. You can also look at the store for a Hyperflex ball on the Little Giant Step store. If you'll turn that ball inside out and stick their fingers all the way up in it, their fingers and thumb, and open that ball with their fingers and the ball is wrapped around their hand, this is working on their extensor muscles, which will help them to be able to write because you have to have extensors and flexors. You know, a lot of people know about stress balls, and you can use that too for building the flexor muscles, just squeezing the ball. But the hyperflex ball, you're putting the fingers in it, pressing out, and that really makes a difference in their ability to have those extensor muscles worked on. There's also many cortical opposition activities, a wide range of them, in the Early Learning Foundations Level 1, and there's some in Early Learning Foundations Level 2 as well. Now the pencil grasp, I'm a real stickler for this because there is a best way to hold it and that's with the tripod grip, three fingers. Some people don't think it's very important, but I think a lot of the reason why the kids aren't holding their pencil right is because they don't have that hand strength like we were talking about. So hanging from a bar or doing monkey bars are even better. Monkey bars helps the eye-hand coordination, you know, because they're looking at their hand for the next rung, and it helps them know where they are in space, the proprioception. It also brings a lot of oxygen into the lungs, which will help the brain as well. Now, if they've already established a bad habit, I want to encourage you to get the grip called the claw, and you can find that at the Little Giant Step store. Now, in the language area, Obviously, you want to provide a rich environment language-wise. Just constantly reinforce the proper grammar that the child uses. If they're using it incorrectly, just state it correctly, and sometimes they'll repeat it. It's not necessary that they do. It's just that they get the information that they need. Read to them a lot and explain as you go. That builds their vocabulary, or they can use those words. If the child has articulation problems, which is part of this language area, we do have a mini program for that. So you can check 
on that if you would be interested in a mini program to help address that outside of other therapies. Then in mobility, I can't emphasize enough the importance of the cross pattern movement and on the floor is the best for a really good foundation. There's a wide range of movement activities that are in the Early Learning Foundations Level 2 for kindergarten and the Early Learning Foundations Level 3 for first and second grade. That relates to their math. So I hope you can see how having well-developed abilities in these six areas of development are just really essential for success in later academics. The Early Learning Foundations programs offer specific neurodevelopmental help for most of these six areas. The language area is the exception because it doesn't really go into that specifically. We are continuing to add to our offering of neurodevelopmental innovations at Little Giant Steps, so you have what you need to enhance your children's abilities. Two new programs are available to help you prepare a good foundation for academics. We've created many programs for preschool and kindergarten. We talked about the six areas of development that are needed to do well in school and life. Each mini program will list activities that address directly or indirectly each of these six areas of development. This will be similar to the neurodevelopmental activities that are offered in the Early Learning Foundations, but it won't include any math portion. So if you're in love with your math curriculum and you don't want to change to, say, Early Learning Foundations, one for preschool or two for kindergarten or three for first and second grade, you can still have those neurodevelopmental benefits. You just add that to whatever you're currently doing. It won't add much to your day and it will add tremendous benefit to your life. There will be web training for all of those activities and a tracking sheet so you'll know which ones you've done and, and keep track as you're working toward neurological efficiency for your child. Each school year would be divided into three parts and a different mini program would be used for each part of the year. So as you continue the progression through the brain development, it's just going to make a huge difference in that foundation. If you're interested in the mini programs, you can check out the store at littlegiantsteps.com. Well, that's all the time I have for today. I hope that I have assisted you in your journey toward understanding how you can use brain boosters to help your children prepare for academics. If you make it a priority to use the tips I have given or the specific programs to enhance brain function, your child's homeschool experience could be much more productive and pleasant for both of you. You can also follow me on Pinterest. I'm Jan Bedell Dash Brain Coach. Be sure to stay tuned to where you will receive more Brain Coach tips to make life and learning easier. Remember, neurodevelopment is a dynamic approach to life at any age. So think differently. The solution is not in the problem. Until next week, it's the Brain Coach signing off.